a lot of news has come out uh, from Adrian Wojnarowski about the Players Association and issues that have come up. One of the things that has come up has been, you know, that players are not so excited, at least some of them, especially non-contenders, about being away from their family for a long time, about not being able to leave the Disney World campus. Uh, obviously, you've got coronavirus. Obviously, you've got the emergence of some social justice issues. Um, and 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 one of the things that came up again was you can't leave the campus unless you undergo a 10-day quarantine when you come back. So you're really just not able to leave once you get there. What have you made of the news that we've heard this week and the fact that there's at least a portion of the Players Association that they're not loving this? It's all very fair. Um, I think for any player who feels some unrest about the risk of going uh, because of coronavirus or any player who feels uneasy about, you know, going to Disney World for possibly two and a half months when they feel an obligation and, and uh, they feel like they have the, um, the power to make change in the world with all the movements going on right now for racial justice. I mean, Chris Haynes had a great article at Yahoo this morning where he said there are many players who are, you know, complaining about the fact that, uh, first of all, like you're there's risk in going to Disney world, but now that there's the movements uh, happening, being away uh, at a, at a camp for entertainment reasons for two months. Oh, what would the, uh, they say the Chris Haynes wrote, you know, a lot of players feel that that is bad optics for a predominantly black league to be at Disney world for that long. When there um, are all these protests happening, all this movement happening, when there's more important things happening that many players feel like they want to be part of. And, you know, there was a, a really interesting conversation on the JJ Reddick podcast with Tommy Alter yesterday uh, with Malcolm Brogdon, who, you know, you and I spoke about before, who was at one of these protests. And Brogdon really laid it out there, both sides. You know, there are certain players who who feel like, you know, going back to play basketball is something that uh, – diminishes their opportunities to have a voice and to make change. But then there are other players who in JJ Reddick kind of alluded to this too, that feel like by playing basketball with the spotlight on you, cameras in your face, everybody focusing on what you're saying and doing that there's or opportunity opportunity with that stage to really make a difference and bring more awareness to potential changes to make society better for all. Um, you know, and I, I tend to lean on on the optimistic side here that like with basketball coming back, it could be really uh, an agent for change. Um, but I, I also see the side that Chris Haynes wrote about today uh, that Brogdon brought up um, and that many others have as well, uh, that, that this isn't as easy as, you know, just going to Disney World and getting tested every day. There's so many more uh, layers to this that make it a complicated decision for any individual player to go back and uh, regardless of their reason, whether it's coronavirus or whether it's, you know, wanting to be part of, you know, the protests uh, and not be, you know, sequestered at Disney World for so long. Um, I can understand any player not wanting to play. It'll be interesting because you do wonder, are, are, are guys really going to be able to, or be willing to give up their salary. If they're not going to get paid for not going and not playing, are they going to be willing to give up their salary for that? I mean, I think it feels like a confluence of everything, right? That this is not an easy way to go do your job, right? And maybe things are a little bit different if you're just starting back and you're playing in your home arenas and things are back to normal and you're able to finish out your season. Um, Garrett Temple is a guy I got to know when he was with the Grizzlies. He's the vice president of the Players Association. And I thought he made a, a rather persuasive point in saying, look, there are a finite amount of black millionaires in America and in the world. And in terms of the wage gap and what we represent to so many people and the fact that we can with that money is not everything, but money does enable us, like you have seen with LeBron's Promise Academy that goes on in Akron. Money enables us to enact change. It will also give us the opportunity, and this is what he said to the players, it will also give us the opportunity to truly get together 
and put together great plans where we could really affect change. And he said, and I can't in good conscience encourage anyone to leave that money on the table when I do believe that not only does it set a great example for many others, it also gives us the opportunity to exact real change. I mean, he's a very, very bright guy. Garrett Temple. And he said, I would be, I would have been out there in those protests. And I believe him wholeheartedly. He comes from a family that from the time he was born, if you ever look up the story of Garrett Temple, Garrett Temple has been helping people since he was a child. His parents uh, went out of their way to teach him about helping other people. He's even gone out of the country to help people. And he said, I would have been out there except his wife is pregnant. And Mm -hmm. so it created a a, a greater risk. But I mean, he is a he's a very, very smart guy who I thought made a rather persuasive point to a lot of players in the league. I understand what's going on. I'm with you and I am one of these guys. But I but I don't think that it's the right thing for us to say, hey, we're not going to go play. Right. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'll, listen, I'll, it's, it's understandable, uh, but I mean, and and yeah. obviously, we'll see. Um, there's going to be peer pressure from your team too. You know what I mean? I, I if mean, you're not, no, going. no, it, it, that that's that's what Chris Haynes reported this morning. He said sources said several players have been have been reluctant to express their views in fear of opposing the superstars who are adamant about playing if proper safety measures are in place. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm not shocked by that. Like you said, there's a peer pressure aspect. If like, you know, the top two players on the team and like the fifth guy and the sixth guy, you know, want to play, you think the fourth best player on that team is going to be like, actually, guys, we shouldn't play. You know, if the majority want to and sp- including the top guys, probably not. Probably not. It's no different than any other like workplace dynamic necessarily where a boss says one thing uh, or like a, a leader on a team says one thing. Sometimes people are afraid to speak up, which is why like it's a good thing that this counter viewpoint is out there these last couple of days. Because like I said, I, I tend to side with the, like you said, temple. I tend to feel like, you know, like Brogdon alluded to that there is a platform here that players could really utilize and that could really make a difference because the NBA, it doesn't just need to be a game. It it isn't just a game. Sports has never just been about the game itself. It has always had, you know, whether it's like Muhammad Ali doing what he did, no matter what it is over the years, there's always been people who have used this platform for good, including this week with LeBron doing what he did with Trey Young and the other athletes on that team with more than a vote, trying to not only raise awareness for voting, this isn't just get out and vote, but showing people how to vote, how what to be aware of with uh, some of the anti-voting measures that are out there in certain states. Athletes have always used their platforms for good, and with NBA returning this year, I think there's opportunity here for players to use this Disney World stage from July 30th to, you know, mid October, which is going to lead right up to where the election is for really pushing for positive change in the world. Um, but I can also understand though, like I said, if somebody individually, and this is like, it's an individual decision. If somebody feels like they, they can better use their voice away from Disney world. I can understand that if somebody feels like on a personal level, there's too much risk for them to go to Disney world, maybe on a personal level, if they have a medical condition or one of their loved ones has a medical condition that they just want to be home with that person. I get that too. Uh, This is an individual person to person decision for every player in the league. Uh, And I can understand anybody's viewpoint on this personally. I mean, it's a, it's a complicated time, man. There's a pandemic happening. There's right. a pandemic happening right now. Still, I mean, it doesn't feel like it because because like things are opening up and you know the news is mostly all about the protests. Even though this week it's weirdly not been covered that much. Even though there's still thousands of people in the streets, they suddenly these mainstream news stations are not covering them as much as they were last week. I wonder why that is. Uh, maybe not to promote uh, and amplify the voice out there. I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it's 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 a time we're never gonna we're never going to forget and we're living through it right now. And if, if like if Jalen Brown or Malcolm Brogdon decides I want to seize this opportunity and not play basketball, I, I fully get it. I totally get it. I would just say, I do think their stage 
is greater and they could have even a greater impact by being a part of it. It almost, I don't know if it defeats the purpose by you not playing because then a story becomes you not playing more, sometimes more so than the message you are trying to get across. And the other thing is this, Kev, look, in the end, it, it, the NBA is being very, very understanding. It is a job. I mean, it is your job. You could very well tell Bill, hey, Bill, not going to be doing any podcast. I'm not. Uh, this is very important to me. I'm not going to do any podcast. I'm not going to do any writing. And I want to go be a part of change. And I want to go be a part of protest. He may say, okay, okay, go ahead. You know, and you know, you won't get paid for the time you're here. And then we'll welcome you back when when time comes. But mm-hmm. I mean, it is a, it is a difficult situation. You know what I mean? Like they are. They are part of an organization and they it is a job that they have. It's not just, you know, you get to play whenever you want to. Um, and we'll, so we'll see. We'll see the way it all plays out, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. And, and obviously, there have been some other things outside of all of the social issues, the coronavirus, if you are scared of playing in that. It feels like, as I said, Kev, it's all of these things that come along with it, like, you're staying at Disney World. You're not going to be able to see your family. You can't leave the campus. And guys are like, this sound, This does not sound fun to me. I'm not winning a tie. Like, this team's not that good anyway, right? I mean, we're going to be scratching the claw to try to make the playoffs. The younger, hungrier players, I don't think there will be any issue generally with, with teams with a lot of those. It's the teams that are laden with veterans that are going to say... Uh, because more than likely, they're the ones with families. More than likely, they're the ones that have been through real seasons before and real playoff runs before. And the idea of them uh, being inside of a campus for a month, two months, maybe more, is just not that's not what they that's not what they want to do. And so I think that'll be probably more so of the if we have players that don't show up, but I would guess that this is probably a, in some ways it's a negotiation. And I'd imagine you have a very, very, very high percentage of the league show up. And there's only a few guys here and there that are part of the 22 teams that don't. I believe Woj reported earlier this week that he's heard like 40 to 50 players. Uh, was the number that he heard that have some you know hesitations about about yep. going back, and that that's a large chunk. That, yeah. That's a large chunk of players, right? Oh, uh, you only got four fifty in the league, so I mean you're cutting down, you know, eight nine teams oh, that I aren't going to be there, and you're already and you're already down to like three thirty. Yeah, twenty two teams will be going there, so forty right. to fifty of three thirty. That that's quite a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I would still imagine, as you said, that of those forty to fifty, that you know most of them will decide to go. Uh, I, I mean, this, this is, it's a complicated time and, and this, this sort of touches on what we hit on, you know, over the last couple of weeks and that for a guy, you know, if you're not on a championship contender, uh, like let's just, I'm just throwing a name out there for an example, but like if you're DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge just had shoulder surgery and he's out and like already, you're not guaranteed to get that eight seed. I mean, you're probably feeling like, do I really want to like do this like training camp, getting tested every day for three weeks, then go to Disney world and do a quarantine there for 36 hours, getting tested every single day away from my family. I mean, I'm sure you would cause like it's your job and you're getting paid and it's part of the team. And like for him personally, he can be a free agent this summer. I mean, like there's a whole lot of factors in play here, but I could also understand like any player being like, do I really want to do this? Is this worth it with everything going on with a pandemic happening? I'd rather just be with my loved ones right now. I get it. It's you know what, Kev? It's interesting. You brought up him because that would create, and and I, we don't know anything about DeMar DeRozan or how he feels about this or anything else, but it just so happens. His coach has been, one of the most outspoken members of the NBA over the course of the past couple of weeks, whether Mm -hmm. it be um, the article by Dave Zirin or whether it be the podcast that he did with Pete Carroll and, um, and Steve Kerr on the ringer. Um, He's been an outspoken guy. So unlike maybe 
some other situations. I'm not casting uh, aspersions on anyone. I'm saying you you would actually, in that particular case, might have a coach that would say, I stand by him 100% and he can do what he wants to do if he feels this is an important time in our history, um, on and on. 